Welcome to Larry's Library. It is a new month and time for a new Top 10 Tuesday. This time I'm doing my, let's see, it's kind of a long title. This is my Top 10 Magical Weapons of Comic Books, Books, TV, and Film. So I'm going to pull from all of that. But I'm going to get right into it. At number 10, I have the first blade from the Supernatural TV show. So this weapon it comes in at number 10, even though it's very, very powerful. Uh, it comes in at 10 because it's hideously ugly. Just, just an ugly, ugly weapon. It's made from, I believe the, uh, let's see, it's, it's made from the bone of a donkey. Is it the jawbone or the hip bone? It's the jawbone of a donkey. And I don't, I don't have this memorized at all. I mean, I remember uh, I, I did watch the entire series and loved it. And I remember how awesome that thing was, but I don't remember all the details. So I'm going to read from the Supernatural Wiki here. I'll give them full credit for this. And I'll put a link in the description to that Supernatural Wiki if you want to check that out. It's a great resource, and it's fun to look stuff up in there. And they have wikis for all kinds of shows. And this I got from uh, the Supernatural Wiki. Like I said, I will link it up below. But I'll read from it here. Uh, the first blade is a weapon made from the jawbone of a donkey that was once connected to the Mark of Cain, which that's a whole thing in the show, if you, if you remember. Uh, the Mark somehow powers the blade, and when held by the bearer of the Mark, is able to kill any known being. And I'll put a picture of it here, too, so you can see that. Uh, it is also the only one of few things that can kill a Knight of Hell, which is a very powerful demon within the lore of the show. It is so powerful that uh, Crowley once called it the most dangerous weapon on the planet. It is, it is dangerous enough to cause fear in even angels who the blade can also kill. So like I said, that's from the Supernatural Wiki. But yeah, that is number 10. Number 9 is Stormbreaker. Now this is Beta Ray Bill's hammer, his version of uh, Thor's hammer that Odin gives him when he transforms him into a, a, a thunder god himself. And this one... Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not in love with the look of it, but it's, it's great, especially as drawn by uh, Walt Simonson, the creator of it. This thing first appeared within Walt Simonson's awesome Thor run. It's all gold, and in some later depictions by other artists, it looks like it has a, an axe blade on one side and a hammer head on the other. But it, to me, the, uh, the original Simonson uh, hammer, uh, Stormbreaker hammer, does not look like that to me. That doesn't look like an axe blade, so I'm not sure if it... If it got changed. Uh, if you know anything about that, put it down in the comments. I'd be interested. But uh, yeah, Stormbreaker is number nine. Number eight is Gungir. I believe that's how you pronounce it. This is Odin's spear. And this is in uh, Norse mythology, but I'm more specifically talking about the, uh, the Marvel Comics version of it, which I'm sure is not very historically accurate as far as uh, Viking spears. They didn't exactly look like this, but I love the way Keith Poehler draws it here. Check out these scans. But yeah, um, Odin's spear in Marvel Comics, at least as, as Pollard uh, envisioned it, uh, is almost like a pole axe or a, you know, a halberd type thing. It, only, it has like, you know, these giant axe looking blades on the side. So it's almost, um, it has three blades. Well, you're seeing it here. I don't need to describe it to you, but it's pretty cool. And there for a while in the, uh, I believe it was the 290s, around in issues 292 through 296, something like that. I think that's where I took these scans from the covers. You could see that Odin likes to abuse his son with it. <laughs> I mean, he's just really giving Thor hell on these covers. And the Odin spear, you know, as far as the way Marvel depicts it, it, uh, it has a lot of the same uh, abilities of Thor's hammer. It's made of uh, Yuru metal, the same you know type of mystical metal, and it will come back to him after he throws it. It's pretty cool. It's a fun weapon. Number seven is June's Axe. I don't think the uh, comic book, or at least not the first uh, many, the, the first uh, editions of it, I don't think it gave this weapon a name, but I'm going to call it June's Axe because uh, she's the character who wielded it in, in the awesome uh, Joe Hill thing, uh, Joe Hill graphic novel, um, Basket Full of Heads. And if you haven't seen my review of that, I'll link it, I'll link it up. You check that out. It's a, it is awesome. If you haven't read Basket Full of Heads, do that features this axe, and it is a magical Viking axe that uh, has some very unique properties. When she kills someone with this axe, their head sort of lives on and they can talk. And I think they have to tell the truth, too, if I remember right. I can't remember. <laughs> it's been a while since I read that one. 
but it's great. And I love the design of this axe. And that is why it is number seven. Number six is the Colt, and it's just known as the Colt, uh, another weapon from the Supernatural TV series. And I'm going to read a little bit, and I'll put some of it up here from the Supernatural Wiki again about this one. On the barrel of the gun is inscribed a Latin quote, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it's from Psalms. I'll put it here. It basically translated from the Latin, it means, I will fear no evil. And this, this revolver is super powerful. It, uh, the, it, originally, it has 13 bullets. And, and the legend within the show, it goes that Sam Colt himself built this weapon and it can take down nearly anything. It can harm angels, takes down demons. It is uh, this super all-powerful all revolver. And for a while, our boys wield that thing. And it is really cool. The only reason it's not higher on the list for me, because I do love revolvers, is because I'm not in love with the model they chose for this. It's not my favorite look for a, for a handgun, but otherwise it'd be even higher on the list. But it's really cool in the show. And if you haven't seen Supernatural, check it out. What are you waiting for? Binge it. I mean, it's only 16 seasons. Come on, what do you want? 16 seasons. Number five, the actual name of this weapon, I can't pronounce. I don't know how it's pronounced. There it is in text form. <laughs> you decide. But in the show, they call it simply the scythe. Now this is Buffy Psy, or rather this is the Slayer Psy from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, TV series. Another great one you should check out if you haven't already for some reason. What are you waiting for? Check it out. But the Psy, I, I kind of think of this as an axe rather than a scythe. Yeah, this is the Slayer's Axe from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I love the way it's depicted on the TV show and also in the comic books. All of the artists working on that, at least the ones I've read, and I've read quite a few of them, uh, depicted the, the axe wonderfully. But here I've got some, uh, some art from some Buffy the Vampire Slayer comics depicting that axe, and it's really cool. And you even get to see Frey. Uh, if you don't know who Frey is, check out Frey. There was a miniseries that Joss Whedon did with awesome art by Carl Moline, where we see a slayer in the far, far future, and her name is Frey. And she has that red axe also. And that is number five. Number four in my Magical Weapons Countdown is Excalibur. Yep, I'm talking about King Arthur's sword. Now, in, it depends on which iteration you're looking at. I mean, there are countless comic books and movies and TV shows that have featured King Arthur, the King Arthur legend. And in some of them, the sword doesn't really seem to have many magical powers other than it it just, it, the design is awesome, <laughs> you know. But it depends on which thing you're reading and, or watching, what the powers are. But it seems to give the wielder a certain amount of invincibility. And some uh, attribute the scabbard to giving him the um, invincibility. So it's a little unclear. But my favorite uh, version of Excalibur is from the John Borman film of the same name. I think it came out in 81. But that's what these picks are from. It's from John Borman's Excalibur. And I love the, the model they use for the sword here. And like I said, it's my favorite version of Excalibur is the one from that film. And that is number four. Number three is Mjolnir. Now that's how I pronounce it. Some people, I think I've heard it said Mjolnir. Uh, there's the word. Mjolnir, th aka Thor's hammer, is number three in my countdown. And I probably don't need to say a whole lot about this. Uh, this is probably one of the better known magical weapons in all of media is probably Thor's hammer. And yeah, I, I just love it. Of course, it he throws it, it comes back. You know, it grants him the, uh, the, the, the power to call lightning and all that stuff. And in some cases, you see him using it to uh, throw energy bolts, which I guess is supposed to be harness lightning. I don't know. It, it depends on the artist. But uh, I also love the MCU depiction of Thor's hammer. It is just nearly 100% comic book accurate. It's This is the way it should look to me. Yeah, and they did a good job on that. So, happy about that one. And it is number three. Number two is Stormbringer. Now, this is Elric of Mel Nibonet's Hellblade. Uh, this is a black, demonic sword. And unfortunately, uh, I have yet to see a comic book accurately depict what Stormbringer should look like, based to me, based on uh, Michael Moorcock, the author's descriptions, and my own uh, vision of it in my head. <laughs> 
they don't really match any of the comic book iterations for me. I mean, even the great Walt Simonson, whom I adore, uh, I don't think he got it right either. I think he might have got closer than most as far as the comic book depictions um, of Stormbringer. But to me, Stormbringer is a enormous two-handed broadsword. When I say broadsword, I am talking about uh, what I've come to know as a broadsword, and that is the sword that Conan typically uh, wields, which has an open hilt design, a crossbar, and a very broad double-edged blade. Now, the uh, weapon purists will probably scoff at that and say, hey, there was no broadswords in the medieval time that came much later, and they have a basket hilt and all, yada, yada, yada. I know the arguments, but I can't get that uh, term out of my head for Conan's sword. And Conan certainly did not use a Scottish basket hilted blade from the 15th century or whatever that the historians use for that name. But regardless, I don't want to get on too much of a sword uh, rant because we could be here all day if I did, believe me. <laughs> but, but at any rate, uh, Michael Moorcock describes Stormbringer as being very, very long blade, broad bladed, and I think he mentions that the hilt is two-handed. So, I don't know, for, for my money, okay, and for my head canon, the person that the artist has come closest to depicting Stormbringer accurately is Michael Wellen, awesome fantasy painter Michael Wellen, and uh, he did a lot of the Ace uh, paperback versions that I grew up reading, Elric, you know, in that form, and I'll show a couple of his uh, paintings here, and I think he came closest to depicting it right. This one's really great. I love this. This was used as the cover to Stormbringer, the uh, the novel, and I th this one is almost perfect, I think. I think the blade's a little too pointy and, and narrow on the end because a, a real weapon, and again, you know, these are magical weapons, so maybe they can get by, but a real sword with a blade that where the point slenders that long, that would break off in battle. It would not hold up. But hey, it's a magical blade, so may maybe that works. But yeah, uh, Stormbringer is a demonic weapon, and it sucks the souls out of people he kills, and it transfers that energy into Elric. I mean, it's a whole thing. If you haven't read the Michael Moorcock Elric books, it is a blast. It is a uh, it's wild. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. And if you have seen something like that, it's probably derivative of Michael Moorcock's uh, Elric saga. Probably is. I know a lot of people see uh, that don't aren't familiar with Elric. They only know the Witcher TV show, and they say, "Well, that's a Elric's a rip off of the Witcher." Well, not really. Uh, they're they're actually if you if you trace it all back, if you really dig in the weeds on this, as I have. You'll see that the original novelization of The Witcher was sort of done in parallel to the first Elric stories that Michael Moorcock uh, had written. So they, uh, it's kind of like Swamp Thing and Man Thing. If you do a deep dive on those uh, characters, you'll find that neither was a ripoff of the other. And they were actually sort of developed in parallel as far as time-wise, time frame. You can't really say, well, this one came first because they were almost exactly the same time. So, it's just one of those coincidences that happens sometimes. But, sorry for that rant. But yeah, Stormbringer is number two on my list of favorite magical weapons. If you've watched this channel for very long, or if you've watched very many of my videos, the, my number one magical weapon, uh, favorite magical weapon, is probably no surprise to you. It is this guy right here. Sting from Lord of the Rings, from The Hobbit from the books and from the excellent movies. And this is a, uh, a replica of that sword. And it's, I think it's really, really accurate to the movie version. I love it. This was a gift, Christmas gift from, from my wife. And I think this is um, United Cutlery's version of it. There are a few different versions you can get. Real stainless steel, I love this thing. It, um, no edge. I mean, you could put one on, I suppose, but I wouldn't. It, it's a it's a wall hanger, but I do love this thing. And this is um, Sting is the magical sword that Bilbo originally wielded, and then he gives it to Frodo later. Yeah, he, uh, he eventually gives this to Frodo, and he wields it to great effect. You also see in the original Lord of the Rings and in the movie version that Samwise gets to wield it a couple of times too. 
I believe he kills that big giant spider with, with uh, Sting. And Sting has various magical properties. Uh, I think mainly the deal is it will glow in the presence of orcs and I think goblins so, and some related creatures. It will glow this uh, shimmering blue uh, color. It's awesome. I love this thing. I love this design. Uh, has a nice zing when you pull it out of the scabbard. I just, uh, I can't stop handling it. When I, when I take it off the wall to do a video like this or just to show it to someone, it takes a while to get it back out of my hand. That's how much I love this thing. But yeah, it is my all-time favorite magical weapon is Sting from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Hope that shows up good on camera. Hope it is focusing because I got it set for eye focus, so it's probably not. But yeah, Sting is my all-time favorite magical weapon from books, TV, film, all of it. It's Sting for me. So what about you? What are your favorite magical weapons? Which ones did I leave out? Which ones are you? Are you pointing at the screen saying, oh, you idiot, you left out blank. Uh, let me know down in the comments what your favorite magical weapons are and how you, how you would rank them if, if you want to rank them. I uh, hope you enjoyed this top 10. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you've not done that yet. Helps out the channel big time. And I will see you next time.